Hello, my name is Micah and I'm a concept artist and illustrator here today to show you a little bit of a process video on a cover I did for a D&D one shot. Let's dive in. So around a year ago, I uh, took a crash course in building D&D one shots and basically wanted to do my own little project, kind of a culmination of everything that I learned, but also a way of showcasing a little bit of my art. If you are interested in taking a look at this D&D one shot slash playing it for your own games, it's available uh, for download on my Patreon with a sub tier of $5 or more. A brief synopsis of the story is players have been hired by a wealthy merchant to investigate the Palace of Roses, a place long abandoned by time and misfortune. The players must find the truth of what transpired at this religious school and fight an evil curse that befouls it. When I was first beginning to think about this piece, I knew exactly what part of the story I wanted to highlight. It was the very first thing the players see when they enter the palace, and I thought it perfectly highlighted the encounter, the themes behind it. It's a huge floor-to-ceiling stained glass window depicting their god and the horrid current state of the palace, a tomb littered with thorny vines and corpses. And now it was time to get to work. I started with a lighter background because I knew the light source would be coming towards the viewer. From there, it was an exploration of composition, balancing the foreground and the stained glass background. From here, it was a process of sketch and repeat as I worked with the two corpses grasping the sword and getting the general silhouetted shapes figured out. I'm definitely a gardener, not an architect when it comes to my process. I don't plan every step, rather I let me and the piece grow together through good old trial and error. After that, I begin to carve away at the marks I've already made, defining shapes, then starting the same sort of painting process with the glass window behind them. Here, I knew that the stained glass will need a heavier outline, so I left my beloved commonly used brushes and started using a clean pen brush to give them crisp outlines. I wanted to give Rund, the god, a shepherd's staff, but then I thought that was a little too close to the source material and did away with it. I wanted to give the god figure Rund more mystery, so I removed his upper face, replacing it with his religious symbol, as I think most ecclesiastical artists like to do. Um, religion has to do a lot with iconography and symbolism, and I really wanted to drive that idea home. So here I begin fleshing out the anatomy of the figure in the stained glass, and uh, basically, it ties directly into the story as to why he is uh, hot and practically naked. These young women at this religious school are, are trained to be brides of the power. They are um, raised to be exceptional young women, but also appealing. They're chosen for their extraordinary beauty. And it's because this religion believes that when they die, they ascend and get to be married to uh, their god and serve him there eternally. So I really wanted to add some of that religious propaganda in there. I really wanted to emphasize, like, when this is done in, in like, re real religions and uh, just kind of pointing out the strange creepiness of it. For this background, I really wanted to pay an homage to one of my old college professors. He was an ecclesiastic artist, and he had a very strong technique of using vertical rectangles and circles and kind of overlaying them and making them into rays of light or bunching them up close together to create just sort of background texture or visual noise 
and I really wanted to uh, pay an homage to that and that sort of style that really broke me away from traditional stained glass or how I perceived traditional stained glass. Now it's time for some clouds. I really liked the idea of, you know, just a god sitting on a cloud, you know, almost a cliche. Um, but I also liked this idea of these heavenly powers floating around him, like these orbs that are planets or the cosmos kind of swarming around him. I was going to have them connected by rays of light. I kind of changed my mind on that later on. You could tell at the around this point that I get kind of frustrated with the hands. Uh, I do that a lot. If I get frustrated with something, I will tend to move on and then go back, research some more reference, find a better photo, take a better photo. I like to take a step back every now and again and let things process in my brain a little bit before moving forward. I think that is important for me and how I work. I like to think about things. As I said, I'm a gardener. I don't plan it ahead of time. I like to do it in the moment. When I'm thinking about it, when I'm doing it, that's usually going to give me the best result. Getting back into the fray that is the foreground, I am now trying to make those thorny roots and those vines really kind of leap into the foreground, give you that sense of depth while also trying to deal with the opacity that is happening with the girls' veils. Um, a lot of it is very see-through, and while I wanted to hold on to some of that, I definitely wanted to make sure that, you know, it wasn't too obviously see-through. I wanted to make it so that you're not seeing through the bones or where the skeleton should be or any of the figure. I, I wanted to avoid that. Now we can see that most of the details are completed. I'm kind of now doing very small touch-up and details, moving things here and there, uh, doing more of the pen work with the stained glass, uh, defining shapes, defining where the stained glass, um, how those panels of stained glass work, working with the lights and doing some uh, color dodge effects happening in the background. And then I'm finally starting to get back to detailing these hands. I finish up some final details here, finally finishing up those hands and putting some final little little chef's kiss at the end there. 
uh, with some of the color dodge and some lighting rays coming through that stained glass window. And that about does it for this video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed getting a chance to see a little bit of my process, and I uh, hope it was entertaining for you, or at least uh, somewhat educational. If you'd like to support me uh, and my work, I would greatly appreciate a follow on Instagram, Blue Sky, Ko-Fi, uh, and I stream on Twitch. Join me for that. All my handles are Song of Usera. Um, but the biggest way you can help me is by supporting me on Patreon. Um, that would be the biggest way to support me and my work and help me continue doing stuff like this because I really love to do it and I would greatly love your support uh, in continuing to do so. So I hope you have a great rest of your day and we'll see you next time. All right. Bye-bye.